Well, hey everyone, welcome to this week's Nanom of the Week. We've been switching it up and doing these videos more rapidly so that we could share information about the current global pandemic uh, with the SARS coronavirus COVID 2 structures. Uh, this one for this week is going to be the spike protein, also known as the S protein. And when you look at the coronavirus uh, pictures and images circulating online, uh, you'll notice that it looks like a disc with a bunch of little spikes off the edges. That's actually where the coronavirus gets its name because it looks like a crown. Um, and this is one of those spikes. So this is the area on the surface of the virus that has a little spike hanging off that enters uh, the cell. And this is the area here that actually binds with one of the proteins on the surfaces of your cell uh, that allows the virus to gain entry. Um, so with us today, we have Daniel and Rob from the Nanom team. And we're going to be talking about a few uh, key areas about the spike protein and talking a little bit about just how it works. As well as the areas that are conserved across the original SARS outbreak in 2003, um, all the way up to the current SARS-CoV-2 outbreak that we have uh, going around 2019-2020. So um, just to give people an idea, so this area over here is going to be on the virus side. And so um, if we look at the structure, we have the virus side and then we have the area that's binding over to the human cells. And if we look at that, we see a very important region here in the green. Uh, this is known as the receptor binding domain. And so this is where it binds to the human ACE2 receptor, which is found on human cells. And what we've highlighted in the pink here are all the areas uh, where there are differences in mutations, amino acid mutations, between the original SARS uh, coronavirus and the new SARS-CoV-2. And we could do actually an overlay. So I'm gonna show both of those structures here. So in this navy blue color, uh, we have the original spike protein uh, from the, the original SARS outbreak. And you'll notice uh, that there's some areas here where we, we show all the highlighted differences. And there's a lot of differences uh, being highlighted on the receptor binding domain uh, in the pink. And you know that leads to a much higher binding affinity. And so what's uh, yeah, really pernicious about the, the current SARS-CoV-2 outbreak is just how well it binds uh, to the human ACE2 protein. And um, yeah, that allows it to gain entry and you know, allows it to spread to more people and infect more people. Um, you know, it seems to have a pretty high R0 compared to the original SARS. Uh, mm -hmm. where the R0 value is, um, you know, when one person gets it, are they spreading it to two people, three people, five people, ten people? Um, with diseases like measles, it's, you know, above ten people. You know, every person mm -hmm. that gets one of those diseases spreads it to a lot of people. So, so it I, seems like currently one of the, th like the theory is that because of this uh, receptor binding domain uh, bind has, such a high, has a much higher binding affinity to the human ACE2 receptor, that might be what's driving uh, the increased infectivity of this uh, novel coronavirus. And that yes. makes the receptor binding domain a really important target uh, for anti-coronavirus drugs. Exactly. And so let, let's pull up the, uh, the human portion here. And so in the uh, this nice you know light yellow beige color, uh, we have the human ACE2 protein. Um, so this is actually going to be uh, on the the surface of your cells. And so imagine that the cell is being this this huge area out here, and on the surface there's just this this tiny little protein. And this is a uh, angiotensin converting enzyme too, uh, which is involved in uh, regulating blood pressure. And so there could be some uh, level of like. Um, you know, blood pressure uh, fluctuations happening with people that are infected uh, by the coronavirus due to its interaction with ACE2. Um, however, the main way that we're going to be looking at it today um, is how it binds, you know, the interface here between the green uh, receptor binding domain of the spike protein and the, uh, the white area, which is the, uh, you know, this main alpha helix uh, area here is thought to be the area uh, where there is a very high binding affinity between the spike and ACE2. And so we're just looking at that interface right there. And, uh, you know, just seeing how, how well the, these two uh, proteins come together. And then once that happens, there's actually a, uh, a protein level event that causes a conformational change in the spike um, and then allows the virus to 
um, you know, gain entry. And so the virus will kind of like creep its way into the cell. And then there's actually a fusion bit where it kind of like closes up the, the human cell um, and then inserts its uh, viral RNA into the human cell and causes that host human cell to produce this protein as well as about uh, 20 other proteins or so um, that all self-assemble into new coronaviruses. And so if you could, you know, look at this interface here and design something that could block it, that could target it, that could render the spike, um, you know, not able to, to do its job, then you might be able to, um, you know, prevent people from getting the disease um, or cure people that have the disease. And so that's the, the main interest in looking at the spike protein. Yeah, so we have here the different areas of the spike protein. You can see the N-terminal domain, we have it in blue. So what's really interesting about the N-terminal domain here is just the, the amount of mutations. Um, yeah, that's also very significant here is um, you know, across uh, different, and, and really uh, I actually did a comparison of chain A to chain A. Um, so that would probably be the best to just look at the, um, the chains there to show the differences. We are, are not actually highlighting the differences across chains B and C. Um, but oh, really? just within chain A, yeah, we can see all these differences here. In the in the novel coronavirus, there are changes to hepatitis receptor domain one uh, that people are hypothesized to be driving um, the increased uh, capacity for membrane fusion because as the mutations in HR one um, drive a change in the way that HR two works in the novel coronavirus, and as a result, it has a higher fusion capacity with the cell. Yeah, so in the pre-fusion state, we can see here in yellow is the HR1 domain. And here, this is the post-fusion, and you can see in yellow the same domain. And we can see how it's straightened out because it underwent a large conformational change. And uh, here we have the HR2 domain in green that just binds to the grooves here. And this uh, whole complex is called the six helix uh, bundle. So this is what actually targets the human membrane so that it allows for the, the virus to fuse its viral membrane to the uh, human membrane. We basically have this you know, yellow structure uh, that's on the interior. And uh, uh, when it's going through the fusion process, that is, uh, I'm just gonna show the protein surface and you could actually see that there's you know, a nice little geometric pocket there just sitting right there waiting for the human ACE2 protein to bind to it. And after that event happens, this interior portion actually has a conformational change and that you know, yellow alpha helix uh, ends up really expanding itself into uh, you know, this full bundle here. It's actually, um, a, it's actually a trimer. Uh, so this is part one, one of the yeah. three members. Yeah, okay. so, so exactly. So one of these uh, is, is one of these. And there yeah. are three bits of those uh, that all assemble into this, this bundle over here. And that happens after the receptor binding domain has started fusing uh, with the human cell through the ACE2 interaction. Uh, this is one of the big changes that occurs within the, the spike protein. Correct, and then we have fusing uh, cleavage you know, between the S1 and S2 domains in the spike protein over here. Mm -hmm. So that detaches the two domains, uh, allowing for this conformational change. That enzyme that cleaves the S1 and S2 domains is actually a human enzyme. So in a way, our own cells are facilitating the viral entry. Interesting. And in terms of you know, trying to block some of this, uh, we could design peptides like we see in these green uh, that are going to interact with this bundle and uh, hopefully help mitigate uh, some of the damage that the, the SARS-CoV-2 proteins are doing within the human, right? Correct. Yeah, if we can come up with a peptide that would bind here, it would just prevent the virus to, to enter our own cells. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, everyone watching uh, on YouTube here, um, if you if you go into Nanome, uh, you'll see that we have featured molecules. Uh, one of them is uh, the spike protein. I believe we have the PDB code 6 VYB. There's several other codes you could also import. Uh, right here, this one is 6VSB. And right here, uh, this uh, bundle is 6LXT. 
And you can import all this in Nanom uh, for free, actually, just from the Worldwide Protein Data Bank. And you'll be able to, to see these regions. And we, we would like to call the community to look at the receptor binding domain here. And there are groups, uh, yeah, especially one from MIT, that are looking at designing peptides that could get in between the ACE2, uh, which we see here in the, in the white, and the green receptor binding domain of the SARS-CoV-2 spike. So if we could essentially take you know, part of this alpha helix and turn it into a peptide, which is what the MIT group has done, and then shove it in between where it does not allow it to bind to the real ACE2 and instead is spoofed by this bundle from the um, you know, ACE2 peptide, then it might block entry into the, into the cell. And likewise, uh, there's another region where you can also design a peptide, and that's right here along the side. So um, you know, this receptor binding domain is a really hot area for antibody design, uh, antibody fusion proteins as well, uh, as well as peptides. It seems like this is a really awesome example of the structure as function concept from structural biology. I think peptide design captures that really nicely. It's like, how do we stop the spike protein? Well, it binds to ACE2. Let's take part of ACE2 and shove it in there and see how it works. And it actually looks like it's a pretty promising um, uh, treatment uh, for the coronavirus. Exactly. Based on yeah, that we, paper. we were just talking with uh, another group, uh, Distributed Bio, and what they designed is actually a human antibody um, that has all the right mutations, where instead of using this alpha helix, it's actually the, the antibody structure with uh, good mutations that binds with it. Uh, but what is cool is that another group is actually doing a fusion protein where they are taking parts of the ACE2 protein and they're fusing, the, fusing them onto the end of an antibody. And that's supposed to be better than just designing a pure peptide uh, chain uh, because it'll have a much longer half-life in the body. Uh, peptides might last on the order of hours to days uh, in the human body. However, antibodies could last weeks and be re recirculating, constantly being put into action by the body. Thanks everyone for tuning into this week's Nanom of the Week. Uh, we've highlighted some of the cool spike protein structures here. And if you have your own ideas for things that you'd like to see in Nanom, uh, coronavirus, cancer, um, really this, this very powerful tool is able to tackle anything made out of proteins and atoms and molecules. Um, which is really everything around us. Um, so yeah, thanks everybody for tuning in and stay tuned for more videos as we uh, keep producing content around the coronavirus pandemic. Bye everyone, thank you. Thank you.